So, good morning sa inyong lahat at uh, welcome sa isa na namang uh, live. Yan, learn with the like a live tayo. Uh, we're live on TikTok, Kumu, Facebook, and everywhere na pwede tayo mag-live ng sabay-sabay just so we can catch as many of you this morning. Um, again, ang topic natin today is how to write a poem. So, uh, this is actually a great example of how poetry is basically a series of words that is crafted more to the feel, the taste, the establishment ng emotion more than yung written sentence. Kasi, di ba, uh, he could have written it as, great job, o na ako kaya, um, this is what you do, pero ginawan niya ng pinaka-metro. No? So again, it's another way of writing things. Now, let me again say no, na hindi po ako ang pinakamagaling na poet, ni hindi po ako magaling na poet, ni hindi nga ako poet. No? I wouldn't say that. But what we do here would be for me to explain how you can get started. Ganun naman ako lagi. Uh, I just help you get started. And then maybe you fall in love with it. And then maybe you can find a better mentor for you. Now, a bit of a plug then. We had one of the... Ano ba, contemporary, I would say, contemporary poets uh, in society right now. Ali Sangalang, uh, sa, linya, sa Linya Linya. He was a guest sa Trying Hard podcast natin. So if you want some tips on writing, okay, mayroon tayong episode na Trying Hard, na, trying hard Maging Writer. Yun, guest si Ali doon. Marami siyang mga points. So kung may mga nakapakinig na ng episode na yun, let me know na lang din. It's a really great episode sa Trying Hard uh, podcast. Uh, it's a few episodes ago. Go and check that out kasi marami kayo matututunan kay Ali. Okay? So, yan again, it's it's going to be like parang ano, I'm trying to get your feet wet when it comes to writing. But I hope you explore more. Uh, lalo na if you have more time than I do, go ahead and check out the other literary devices, check out other ways, other tips. Alam ko marami na mga videos dyan kahit sa YouTube um, where you can ask for tips or you can find tips ng mga working poets right now, okay? And yes, um, one of my favorite episodes is really the one with Ali. We had one sa Trying Hard, tapos meron kami naman, ako naman yung nag-guest sa Linya Linya show. Great honor for me. Yeah, I'm a fan of uh, Linya Linya kasi. Kaya talagang sabi ko, okay, <laughs> I was really excited about that. We have more collaborations coming up pala, by the way. So, uh, abangan nyo lang yan. I think uh, Joyce is releasing the episode about uh, burnout tomorrow sa Adulting with Joy Spring. So if you want to catch that, then go ahead and listen. Uh, guess niya naman din ako doon. Yeah, I, I just want to say this, no? Kasi some of you may be watching this as, ano, how to write poetry yung topic? Eh, hindi ko naman gusto maging poet, eh. Hindi ko naman gusto mag, mag-write ng poems. Hindi ko strength ang English. Hindi ko strength ang language. Hindi relevant sa akin to. But what I want to lead with is this. If you learn a few tricks or techniques when it comes to writing poetry, it's actually going to help you in life, not just doon sa pagsusulat mismo ng poems, but in the way that you frame your thoughts, the way that you express yourself, the way that you explain things. And um, I'll give you an example, no? And let's go into Facebook para, para lang maipakita ko sa inyo. So, puta lang tayo doon sa aking page sa Facebook. Ipapakita ko lang sa inyo. Um, yeah, I have a post a couple of days ago, yan, which is this. Uh, this was yung post ko for, for the uh, Women's, International Women's Month. Ayan. So, uh, this is an example lang of how, again, this is not a poem at all. No, hindi to poem. This is just a caption. A caption lang siya for a series of photos that I posted. Pero it's because kahit pa paano we have a bit of foundation when it comes to writing or expressing ourselves, you would see some, ano ba, some parallels pagdating sa the way I write captions on Instagram and the way that usual poems are written. And maganda yung, may sinabi si Ryan, no, pati daw yung Instagram pinafollow niya. Now, if you notice, um, pinagtatawanan din ako minsan ng mga kapatid ko kasi um, kapag nagsusulat ako ng captions sa Instagram, hindi nila ako makakausap kasi nakaganyan talaga ako. So nag-iisip talaga ako ng maigi. 
uh, actually nasa grocery ako uh, buying supplies when I was writing this and naligaw-ligaw yung ako yung may hawak ng push carts naligaw-ligaw ako kasi tira-type ko siya while I was walking now if you notice again meron tayo ditong repetition na ginamit so sabi niya yan babae ako which is basically the ano the parang establishing line nung caption and iba-iba man ang aming tsura anyo at suot babae kami hindi na babawasan na nadaragdagan ang aming kagandahan dahil sa iyong pananaw tas yung iba-iba man inulit yon three times so iba-iba man ang aming ginagawa sa iba't ibang larangan babae kami same yung structure ng sentence na yon dun sa unang parag eh, sa pangalawang paragraph yan babae kami hindi na babawasan na nadaragdagan ang aming kahusayan sa iyong pagtanggap o di pagtanggap. Yan. Iba-iba man ang aming pagpapahayag ng aming kababaihan. Hindi kami mas babae o hindi kasing babae ng iba. Okay? So, we are beautiful. We are different. We are beautiful because we are different. So, if you notice, again, again, this is not a poem at all, ha? But if you know how to write poetry, kahit paano, it gives us a bit of, ano ba, a stronger na... Uh, voice when it comes to us writing prose, okay, or writing just quite simple captions to Instagram. And if you have time and you have read any of the captions that I have on Instagram as well, lalo na yung mga nobelang captions, sometimes you would see that I may alliteration dito, I meron dito ng repetition. I may mga words, may mga words that mean something else. May mga metaphors or alliteration or apostrophe na na peppered doon. So again, it's really not just for those who want to be poets, yung skill of writing, okay, ng poetry. It will help you even if hindi nyo gustong karirin yung pagiging poet. So again, it, a lot of this is writing to survive, okay? Writing to survive as in, if, di ba, sabi sa inyo, hawak ko ang pamilya ko, hawak ko ang pamilya ninyo, sumulat ka ng tula para pakawalan ko sila, at least you have somewhere to start, okay? So, Prinsipe Makata, I would say, I would surmise na siya isang aspiring poet or a working poet right now. Now, we're going to dive into the discussion na kasi we have a lot of activity stored uh, today. And of course, uh, hindi ko kayo tinatakot, no? pero syempre ang goal natin is at the end of this, you have at least one simple poem in your hands that you can kind of look at and toss around uh, na kayo yung gumawa. Okay? So yun yung gagawin natin ngayon. Now, let me just share my presentation, so, how to write a poem tayo ngayon. Um, but again, Okay, hindi ko kayo uh, ililimit sa kaya ninyong gawin with this. Okay, so this is just the starting point. Now, ang unang tanong would be this, and you, it would seem like a simple question, no? but the first question is, what is a poem? Okay, sige nga, tinan natin sa comments kung meron kayong mga definition ng poem. Okay, kasi you know, here's one thing na I, I took from one of my mentors, no? Um, you know, one of my my mentors is attorney Janet Villa. Meron din siyang guest episode sa, sa Trying Hard with Like a podcast. Um, if you have time, listen to it. It's long. It's a long conversation. But hindi ko alam kung wala akong mapuputol doon eh. Kasi talagang she's a very wise woman. Um, she was my lit teacher when I was in college. And itong, yung aming lecture about poetry and poems is one of my favorites hanggang ngayon. And when you ask the question na... Ano ba ang poem? What is a poem? Diba? If you notice, ah, parang ang hirap sagutin, the truth is a lot of us know what poems are, but we can't define it. Do you agree? Yung parang alam ko kung ano yung, medyo may general feeling ako, alam ko kung ano yung tula, pero hindi ko siya ma-define. Right? Ayan, Russell says, poem is an expression of your emotions, ideas, feelings, and what's going on in your mind. That's a good, good um, definition, no? But the thing is, again, some people are also raising some really good points, which is, paano yung rhyme? Paano yung rhythm? Pag wala bang rhyme, okay, ano yung size ng poem? Paano ko bibilangin yung metro niyan? Diba? Kapag wala bang rhyme, kapag wala bang rhythm, is it still a poem? Right? So, may laging may point of contention or pinag, pinaglalamanan ng mga tao kung ano yung definition ng poem. Ayan. So, by the way, Haramin, thank you for sending stars and everyone sending stars on Facebook as well. Salamat sa inyo. So, yeah, Sir Shao Chua, hi, good morning, sir. My rhythm, almost musical. Yes, uh, that's also true, right? But then some poems don't even have uh, enough syllables within a line. Sometimes letters lang, no? You have visual poems na, uh, for example, Falling Leaves, if you've seen this poem. Let me see if I can find it. 
Yan. For example, uh, something like this, no? Hindi na lang yung falling leaves. This is something off of, ano lang, off of Google. Yan. Okay. If you have something like this, okay? This is by Emily, 12 years old. You see how he, she uses words to form a shape that talks about autumn, right? Uh, you have poems that are written as a shape, right? Ito, autumn by Luella. And you see the words are shaped like a leaf or like a map, no? So again, when we talk about poetry, it does have rhythm, it does have rhyme, but there are certain rules that are sometimes broken to make a point. So it's really, again, this, the, the definition isn't as simple as one would think. Okay. Now, yeah, my question is, Raida, how does free verse work po ba? You know, um, yeah, again, we'll cover that in a bit, no? <laughs> Yeah, sabi ni Kenneth, as I know, kahit walang rhythm or rhyme point pa rin eh. Yes, okay, and I kind of agree. But the thing is, okay, let's go back to its roots, no? Now, the word poem comes from the Greek word poema. Hindi ko alam kung yun tamang pronunciation, by the way, kasi nga it's Greek, no? A poet is a maker of things. So kung poem ay something that is made, and ang poet is anyone who makes things, now the definition of poems expands, right? Hindi na requirement ang uh, rhythm, the requirement ang rhyme. But, okay, it is a creation. It is something made by someone. Parang napaka-broad, no, nung definition ng poem. But if, again, we are writing to survive, ibig sabihin, meron tayong creative writing teacher who taught us the rules of poetry that we need to follow, how do we define poems then? Okay? So, again, pulling it back from the definition na a thing made, as in anything made is a poem, uurong tayo ng kaunti. Now, ang dictionary definition, I took this from Collins Dictionary. Okay, sabi niya, a poem is a piece of writing in which the words are chosen for their beauty and sound and are carefully arranged, often in short lines that rhyme. Okay, now if you look at the definition of this, uh, this definition, if you look at the structure of this definition, basically, a poem is written. Okay, it's a written form of art. Na itong words are chosen. I like the word chosen, no? Kasi ibig sabihin, meron silang purpose why they are there. So I guess that is the main, ano ba, rule when it comes to poetry. It may not have rhythm. It may not have rhyme. It may not employ direct rhetorical devices. But we write poems deliberately. We choose the words for beauty and sound to say something. And often, hindi siya as practical as one would think. Okay? So, carefully arranged. These are chosen and carefully arranged. Kahit yun man lang. Okay? Now, some people would say, eh, paano yung free verse poetry? Diba? Kasi pag sabi natin free verse, okay, malayang, malaya yung verses natin, malaya yung verso natin. Ibig sabihin, walang sukat, kadalasan, ito yung pinaka, diba, um, mainstream definition. Walang sukat, ibig sabihin walang requirement ng number of syllables per line. Hindi kailangan nagtutugma yung, yung rhyme, whether A, B, A, B yan o A, A, B, B. Walang ganon, walang structure. It's free verse eh. But I would say this na much like everything else in the world actually when it comes to creative things, you must know the rules before you can break them. Because in my opinion, it's harder to write free verse Kasi, you would now have to justify every word that you choose. Kapag meron ka kasing hinahabol na, na rhythm at saka na rhyme, you would say, I know, I, I have to cut this word. I have to switch this word with something else. Kasi kailangan magkasya siya sa structure ng haiku, magkasya siya sa structure ng iambic pentameter. No? Kailangan kong palitan, kailangan kong gumamit ng synonyms. But when you decide na I'm going to write free verse, ang ibig sabihin nun would be every choice you make now has to be deliberate, in my opinion. So yun nga yung sinasabi natin minsan na yung paradox na kapag walang rules, mas mahirap pa siya minsan. Kasi complete and utter anarchy, di ba, is harder to control than if there are at least guardrails that keep everything in line. Okay? So again, it is... It is your your choice, okay? Now, bakit ko sinas bakit ko na emphasize ngayon yung tatlong bagay na sinasabi dito sa definition nato? 
Again ha, kasi this is writing to survive. Okay? Hindi ko sinasabi na one thing is better than another. Hindi ko sinasabi na mas better if my rhythm, mas better pag may rhyme. Wala akong ganun. Ha? This is not about my preference. What I'm saying is, some of you students will be graded, di ba, based on the poem that you write. Tama? Kasi kaya kayo nandito kasi may mga modules kayo, mga kailangan kayong isulat. And most teachers, if they taught you that poetry means this, that it has to rhyme, it has to have meter. Ibig sabihin nun, in order for you to be graded well, you have to follow those rules. Do you agree? Do you get my point? Okay? So again, yun ang purpose natin. So I'm all for purposive communication. Okay? And yun din, my purpose din tayo for this session. So anong gagawin natin? We are going to at least rein it in. Okay? So hindi ako magbibigay sa inyo ng tula na alpabeto lang. O bibigyan ko kayo ng tula na isang comma sa isang page or isang semicolon sa isang page. People would uh, justify, again, there are poetry written like that and it means something else to certain people. But that is not the goal for this workshop. Okay? I would I would call it a workshop kasi, again, interactive ito. Okay? So, yun ang goal natin, ha? Now, i-break down natin itong definition na ito. Okay? Kung baga, kung meron kang teacher na mag-grade ng iyong poem, Okay? Or gagamitin mo siya as a filler for your college entrance essay or something like that. How do I rein it in? How do I show the person reading this? Now, this is not just a mishmash, mismatch of words, but each word is carefully chosen and carefully arranged to form a poem. Okay? Now, tingnan natin yung definition. Balikan natin. Kung ang poem is this, merong at least, again, this is just my take, okay? My take on poems, ha? At least three things that usually work together to form a poem. The first would be this. We use rhetorical devices. Nagagamitin natin yung RH na yan dun sa tatlo para mas madali nyo siyang matandaan. Kasi nga, again, the goal here would be for you to be able to use this um, on your own time. Now, ano ba yung rhetorical devices na yan? Okay? Now, there are a lot of rhetorical devices. We'll talk about some of them. But the next aspect is rhythm. Yung sinasabi ni Sir Shao kanina, no? Merong feeling eh, merong metro, merong, parang merong heartbeat ang poems. Kaya nga, ang poetry, if you notice, di ba sa schools, meron tayong tula contests. May mga contestant ba ng tula contest dyan? Kaway-kaway? <laughs> Ngising na ba kayo ng maaga? Yan. Naranasan ko naman na sumali sa mga tula contest na ganyan. Um, when I was in grade school, uh, not anymore nung high school kasi medyo low-key ako. Sa essay writing lang ako pumapalo nung high school. Um, pero when I was in grade school. Now, bakit tayo nag... Yan, si Kenneth, nag, sumasari daw siya sa ganun, no? Now, bakit may tula contest tayo where we perform poetry? Kasi nga, again, poetry is meant to be read. And kadalasan meant to be read aloud. And it's also great if it's read a certain way. Okay? Kasi nga, may rhythm siya, eh. Kaya nga yung mga balagtasan, di ba? Tsaka yung mga, mga sumasali sa balagtasan you would find they say things in a certain rhythm. Kung imamodernize natin yung mga nasa flip-top, tama? Familiar ba kayo sa flip-top? Uso pa ba flip-top? Okay. Di ba? Meron din silang sarili nilang rhythm. Di ba? And again, it's another conversation pa nga to say na, okay, our songs, poems. Now, that's another point for another time, okay? Kasi yung iba hindi mag-agree dyan. Pero sa, I would say yes, no? Kadalasan, you would see poems, okay, um, if you take them out of the the context ng meron siyang, meron siyang tugtog, they can stand alone as poetry as well. Okay? Now, ang siguro baseline example or pinakamagandang foot in the door example natin would be Taylor Swift, no? Swifty din ako eh. Aminin ko na. Yan ang sinabi ko na in public. Um, but if you want more, um, <laughs> a deeper dive, on that, um, a fellow Swifty, si Professor Cara David, uh, has her own channel on YouTube. Hindi, hindi, hindi niya ako kilala, by the way. Pinapromote ko lang kasi pinapanood ko yung videos niya. Sa YouTube, hanapin niyo no? yung channel ni Miss Cara David, especially for aspiring journalists and writers. Meron siyang mga deep dive doon, doon sa kung paano binibreak down yung mga lyrics ni Taylor Swift. So again, writing is writing, right? And creativity is creativity, Okay. Yan. At he fed out, spoken poet kanyang strength. Okay. So yeah, again, ang spoken poetry naman, I would say, would be, kasi perf may performative aspect siya eh. So, ang spoken word poetry may not have the same rhythm or rhyme as sonnets or odes or anything like that. But, 
they're meant to be performed. So even yung kung saan ka sisigaw, saan ka bubulong, all of these are decisions made by the writer. So again, these are different forms of what I'd argue is basically writing from your soul. Okay? Now, again, my rhythm. And then your third would be this. Okay? Yung rhyme. Okay? Yan. Sa met sad metaphor makes a good point. Point. Ayan. I had a teacher who's, who, who pronounced it as poem. Uh, merong poem, merong poem, poem. Uh, we will say poem right now kasi nasa mainstream tayo. Mas marami ang makakaintindi na ganun. If I start saying poem, baka maguluhan sila. So, um, again, you have options, no? Kahit sa dictionary, makikita nyo may mga alternative pronunciation yan. Okay? Now, again, meron tayong rhythm, tas meron rhyme. Now, the question is, kapag wala bang isa sa tatlong ito, hindi na ba siya poem? Which is, pinag-uusapan natin kanina pa, Right? Um, pag tinanggal ko ba yung rhyme, meron akong rhetorical device sa rhythm, pero walang rhyme, poem pa rin ba siya? Pag tinanggal ko yung rhythm, may rhetorical device, pero uh, walang rhythm, may rhyme, poem pa rin ba siya? Pag tinanggal ko lahat, di ba? Yun nga, sinasabi ko, if I put a comma on a page and say it's a poem, is it a poem still? Now, kung babalik tayo again sa pinakaugat na definition, if a poem is something that is made, then I would say that it still is a poem by that definition, but it does little to help the reader understand what you're trying to say. So again, babalik tayo sa ano bang gusto ko talaga to achieve if, if, if there's any when it comes to writing this poem. Do I want to express something that I feel? Do I want my readers to feel something? Why? Anong, anong, anong dahilan nito? Okay, so again, uh, hindi yun ang point natin. Ang point natin is how to actually write. So we will move along. Now we will look at a few examples. Now this is a poem. Uh, this is this, this is a list muna pala of some rhetorical devices used in poetry. Of course, there are more. Ang dami-daming mga rhetorical devices. I know some of you uh, have this then sa modules ninyo, rhetorical devices. I have a series on figures of speech that could help you with this. Binreakdown ko yung iba sa kanila. Lalo na yung mga madaling pagkamalian. You can find them on YouTube. Okay, tat nyo lang like a figures of speech. Pero these are just some of the examples used pagdating sa poetry. Okay, sorry, medyo maliit yung text ko. Lakihan natin ng konti. So we have allegory. Um, basically, may secondary meaning siya. Um, kadalasan yung mga fables natin or anything, di ba? If, if there's a crow in the poem, is it actually a crow? Or because it's a crow, does it symbolize death? Things like this sometimes we, we use. Alliteration, of course, repetition ng sound or letter in the beginning. One of the haikus I wrote when I was younger was this. I dreamt dreams of dreams. And I dreamt dreams of dreams, wished wishes, well not wished, and filled fields full of fools. So if you notice, yung ganong klaseng haiku, ganong klaseng poetry, um, yung may repetition ng sounds sa beginning ng words. Okay? So nauulit. Okay? Parang yung mnemonic device din natin for, for this lesson, which is rhetorical device, rhythm, rhyme. So lahat sila are. Okay? Now, you have allusion, which is an indirect reference to something. So um, again, we will not talk about this. This is not the lesson. But if you want us to talk about rhetorical devices in the future, let me know. Um, i ano na natin, i break down na natin next time. Apostrophe is ano, when you're calling out to someone who basically isn't there. Tapos sinisigawan mo siya. Okay, so, oh God, uh, that could be an apostrophe. Assonance is repetition of vowel or diphthong sounds in one or more words found close together. So, a sieve of reprieve or something like that um, could be an, an example. Kasi yung E sound, ng IE sound is present in both words. I uh, have blank verse, consonants, and uh, consonants naman repetition of consonant sounds pa ulit ulit. Uh, enjambment, yung enjambment is actually a strong tool then. Parang tapos na yung poem, tapos meron kang pahabol. Parang ganun. Which would, yung pahabol na yun doesn't really, hindi, hindi bitin yung structure ng poem. Pero dahil meron kang dinugtong, it changes the meaning of the entire thing. So again, dito tayo papasok dun sa how deliberate we are when choosing things that we put into our poems. Kasi it's usually not literal, not very direct. Okay. And these are tools that we use. Now, the more rhetorical devices that you're familiar with, the more tools you have in your tool belt to build your poem up or to employ when it comes to your writing. Okay? Now, um, irony, of course, metaphor, repetition, 
Yung repetition again, we use that as an example na kanina doon sa minreak daw natin poem. And a rhetorical question. No? Sometimes kasi we use rhetorical questions. Pag sinabi natin rhetorical questions, these are questions that we ask pero we are not waiting for a response. You're actually asking a question to make a point. Okay, so do you think it's right? Pero hindi ka malagintay ng response. Kasi by, by saying that do you think it's right, ang sinasabi mo na is that you don't think it's right. Okay, something like that. It's a very simple example. Okay, now again, hindi ito kompleto ha, there are more. But some of these examples we would be able to observe in the next poems that we talk about. So again, some examples ng muna. Those, this is a very famous, ano, pa, 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 pa classic na, contemporary classic poem by Robert Frost, Fire and Ice. We also covered this in our lit class before. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. Now, if you notice, there's a repetition right away. We have the word some there, some, right? From what I've tasted of desire, which rhymes, like, rhymes with fire, and I hold with those who favor fire. But if I had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Okay? So I, you would see in this poem, wala siyang super strict na rhythm, right? So yung rhythm, um, when it comes to like a fixed number of syllables per line, wala masyado, no? Medyo may point of contention. Although maganda pa rin siya pakinggan, masarap pa rin siya sabihin or big kasin, masarap siya sa tenga, pero hindi siya strict. Hindi na kabilang. Okay? Hindi katulad ng mga poems na parang pag 10 syllables, tapos 8. 10 syllables, tapos 8. May mga ganun. No? Now, may rhyme ba siya? Merong rhyme, yes. Kasi fire, rhymes with desire. Bumalik yung fire, di ba? Yung ice, suffice, heat and great, di ba? Twice and ice, meron din. Although, hindi siya sobrang strict din. Kasi yung iba, meron tayong combination na yung AA, BB. Ano ibig sabihin nito? This word should rhyme with this. This word rhymes with this. Or merong alternate. So, AB, AB. This rhymes with this. This rhymes with this. Hindi siya masyadong strict, pero meron namang rhyme. So, we would say, sige, okay, meron siya. Are there rhetorical devices? Okay. Now, dito na tayo papasok dun sa paano natin i-enjoy itong poem na to. Pag sinabi ba ni Robert Frost na fire and ice, ang ibig sabihin niya talaga literal na fire or ice, is it really just that? Or is he talking about something else? Right? Now, we would say, di ba, again, because poems employ rhetorical devices, these words probably are metaphors for something else. So, hindi literal na fire yung pinag-uusapan natin. It's something else. Now, again, if I put myself in the shoes of Robert Frost, which is going to be very hard to do, okay, <laughs> and quite impossible actually, dito na natin titingnan na ano yung purpose niya sa ginawa niya dito. Now, you notice may mga putol, no? Like this part right here, this part right here. Bakit niya yung dinaside? So again, when it comes to poetry, um, you can enjoy it like junk food. Okay, a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, but if you want to take a deeper dive, you can also do that. Like, start asking yourself, why are these words here? Why, what does fire mean? Okay, so doon na pumapasok yung kapag nasa school kayo, sometimes, di ba, your teachers would ask. So tingin niyo ano ibig sabihin, no, fire, ano yung symbolism ng ice, no? Kasi nga, it can mean a lot of things. And the poet doesn't really explain exactly kung ano yung sagot. So it really helps with your critical thinking skills, right? Kasi fire can stand for passion. Ice can stand for uh, indifference, but hindi na yun sure exactly kung ano yung gusto ng sabihin ni Robert Frost. Okay, so again, dun na build yung ating appreciation for poetry. So sometimes we read something, just na enjoy ko lang. Ay parang ang ganda. Okay. Now, if you enjoy something, naman na oh parang ang ganda niya. Bakit ko kaya siya nagustuhan? Ano kaya to? Pwede ko pa siyang silipin ng mas closely. Okay, then that is how you build a bit of Ano ba? Appreciation that goes beyond yung usual consumption. No? Kasi yun nga minsan, di ba, when you look at art, we consume it, but then it's done. But you don't really appreciate it. So there's a difference between those two things. Here's another example. This is Fog by Carl Sandburg. Gusto ninyo ng flavors? Parang, ano, napaka, napaka laya na nito, no? So this is Fog by Carl Sandburg. Sabi niya, the fog comes on little cat feet. It sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches and then moves on. Okay, now if you notice again, um, 
wala na siya nung mga rhymes na we usually find uh, in poems. And even in the structure, you have two lines at the beginning and four lines sa dulo. So it really isn't as masinsin as we usually define it. Hindi katulad pag kumakanta tayo ng nursery rhymes natin, di ba? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Di ba? Star, R. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. No? So hindi na siya as nakakulong as that. But if you notice, because Carl talks about fog, and again, probably fog means something else. Or even if it does, it has personification, no? It's sabi, it comes on little cat feet. So at least meron kang feeling na, ano bang klaseng, ano yung gusto niya sabihin by little cat feet? Now, if you notice, ang pusa, di ba, kapag naglalakad, hindi mo naririnig, hindi katulad ng aso, no? Kasi yung ako, <laughs> may have a dog, no? Si Hailey, uh, nawala dito ngayon kasi gusto niya sumama sa kanyang lolo kasi mag, ano, uh, lalabas daw sila, no? Um, for errands. And meron din kaming pusa, si Athena. Now, ang aso, kapag dumarating na yan, lalo na kapag masaya yan, naririnig niyo yung yabag, no? Lalo na yung aso ko, 25 kilos yun, no? Marigat. Pero yung pusa, kapag naglalakad siya, hindi mo, di ba yung soft na padded na feet ng cat? Hindi mo siya naririnig? So, when Carl talks about fog, coming on little cat feet, ano kaya ang gusto niya sabihin? Na hindi siya napapansin? Na silent siya, hindi mo siya masyadong nakikita? Hindi mo siya naririnig, pero nandyan siya? Thus, it says, it sits looking over harbor and city on silent haunches. Ano ba yung haunches? No? Now, yung haunches would be, um, if there's a visual representation of that, quite literal, that would be yung to. Right? Di ba? And then, moves on. Okay? Now, if, right, if I would look at this poem, oh, di ba? It makes you feel cold. It makes, kasi fog yung pinag-uusapan. It makes you feel a bit lonely. Pero there's a bit of hope sa end kasi sabi it, it moves on. So sa akin, especially if I'm sad sa season na to, which is when I first came across this poem, it makes me actually hopeful. Kasi the sadness that I have, and I usually define my own struggle with uh, dysthymia and depression as that. I have dark clouds. I call it dark clouds, which is a lot like fog. You know, it comes in little cat feet. Yung okay, okay ka eh, tapos biglang hindi ka okay one day. So it, sit the, it would sit there looking over harbor and city, which I would think would be yung busy, busy, busy life, no? On silent haunches. But the beauty is that it, it moves on. But again, that is my way of appreciating this poem. But you may look at it some, in another way. Now, this is another poem by Emily Dickinson. Um, if you are not familiar with Emily Dickinson, it's a fascinating story, you know? Kasi she is one of the most prolific, prolific poets to have ever existed, lalo na in American uh, literature. She wrote about ano ba, 1,800 poems. But ano, all of the poems that we love today were written by Emily, but not for a public audience. They were found, well, arguable yun. They were found sa trunk ng isang maid after she died. So again, that that ang definition mo ng writing for writing sake, di ba? Can be, it's it's different. And meron siyang fascination with capitalizing things. <laughs> and again, these are very deliberate choices. If you notice, ang hope sa kanya has a capital H, which which makes it a common noun. Eh, which makes it a proper noun, not a common noun. Kasi ang nating proper noun, ibig sabihin character na siya, no? Nagiging parang, meron na siyang persona, no? So hope is the thing with feathers, pero nalagyan niya ng ng course, like why, right? So again, this is a, a poem. Sometimes you would read it, diba? Hope is a thing with feathers, it perches in the soul, and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. So there's a bit of rhythm. Sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could bash the little bird, again with a capital letter, that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and all the strangest sea, yet never in extremity I, it asked the crumb of me. In the capital na naman. So you would say, oh, oh, wow, this is nice, right? But if you have time, go deep. Diba? Go deep. Kasi ang daming pwedeng himayin dito, which we will not go get into today. Kasi hindi naman poetry appreciation yung uh, goal natin. But you see how she plays with words. With rhythm, with rhyme, with even punctuation and capitalization. Kasi may rules ng capitalization, right? 
kapag i-capitalize mo na siya kapag proper noun siya. Pero these words that she capitalized, like hope, extremity, me, okay? Bird, gale, no? You would ask, eh, are these random? Knowing Emily, no. No? But again, why? Now, here's another example. A, a more, ano ba to? This is a more extreme example. This is a modern poem by uh, Cleon. Meron din siyang, um, meron siyang Instagram account, by the way, Austin Cleon. I grabbed it from there. Uh, what, she, what he does is nag-redact siya ng lines. So if, for example, this is a page in a book, you close out the, some of the lines, leave some of the words there, and then that becomes the poem. So it's more like a visual interaction with the poem. These are words. Now, again, if we look at the definition, of these are carefully chosen, carefully placed words within the bounds. This is a good example. And title is Overheard on the Titanic. So again, galing to sa page ng ibang libro. No? Ang natirang lines were the, these. I mean, yes, we're sinking, but the music is exceptional. Okay, so yun yung, yun yung iniwan yung mga words dun sa page. So again, we see so many things, okay, are poems, and so many of the things that we know are poems are not present in other poems. Okay? Now, this is another example, no? Uh, I think I, again, my date naman. So I wrote it last year. At night, the wolf howls, the wind whispers in an answer, tomorrow maybe. Again, bakit? Uh, gagamitin ko some of the poems, uh, poems, quote-unquote, I wrote. Kasi pwede ko siya i-bash or pwede ko siyang himayin, okay? Nang walang awa kasi akin to, walang magagalit sa akin. <laughs> but this is an example of a haiku, okay? Yun din yung caption niya. So, hashtag haiku. Now, ano yung haiku? This is a Japanese poem structure. Na meron siyang uh, number of syllables per line. But if you notice in this specific poem, sabi niya, at night the wolf howls, the wind whispers an answer. Tomorrow, period, maybe. Now, all the choices made in this simple poem need to be, again, revisited. Because if you just look at it and feel it, parang ang lungkot lang, no? Now, the next question would be, at night, the wolf howls, the wind whispers an answer. The question, ne next question would be, yung, yung tomorrow, sino nagsabi nun? Is that the wind na nagsabi na, oh, tomorrow, bukas okay na, magiging okay na lahat? And then the wolf says, maybe, okay? So again, about hope. Or, yung tomorrow maybe, sinabi lang ba ng wolf? Kasi hindi niya narinig yung sinabi ng wind. Right? So, na, na, howl ang wolf. Bakit ba usually nag-howl ang wolf? Diba? They are looking for, they're looking for um, fellow wolves. So lonely, siguro yung wolf, nag-howl siya at night. Bumulong yung wind ng answer eh. Pero hindi niya narinig. So lonely pa rin siya. Kaya sabi niya, ah, tomorrow maybe. Try ko uli mag-howl. Maghanap uli ako ng, ng someone out there for me or something like that. no Or help. Right? Or, sinabi ba nung wind na tomorrow? As in, tomorrow, makakahanap ka ng hope. Makakahanap ka ng, ng, um, ng fellow wolf. sabi na lang natin. No? Or maybe. So again, these are things that we need to think about when we are reading poems. Para when we write our own poems, we know how to how to convey certain things. Now, ito na, writing to survive. Okay? Yan na. Again, writing to survive. Kasi kailangan eh, graded eh. Wala akong choice. Pinapagawa ko na activity ni teacher, kailangan ko magsulat ng poem. First thing would be to pick a prompt. Now, some of you would say, kasi may mga, ano tayo, may mga poets tayo sa chat box, ano, nakikita ko yung mga, mga comments ninyo. Some of you may say, eh, kasi, well, I just write, no? Parang things come to me and I just write things kasi I feel like writing them. them. And it's true. Pwede yun. Yan. Si Prinsipe Makata sent a lechon. Siguro ganun siya. Tama ba ako, Prinsipe? Parang nakaupo ka lang. Diba? Or you're watching a t uh, TV show or you're looking at the window and then poems come to you. That could happen. But for those of you na it doesn't come naturally yet, possibly because you haven't consumed a lot of poetry in your life yet, how do we start writing a poem? So first thing, again, very practical to, ha? writing to survive lamang, pick a prompt. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about hope? Do you want to talk about family? Do you want to talk about love? Do you want to talk about um, maybe the season? 
di ba? Do you want to talk about the pandemic? Anything that you want to write about? Now, kadalasan kapag nagbigay ng homework ang teacher sa inyo, may kalakip na yung prompt, di ba? Write a poem about your family. Write a poem about your feelings or something like that. Now, kung meron na sinabi, di yun na yung prompt mo. Okay? Now, the next step would be to pin a point. Now, ano yung pin a point? What do I want to say? So, if your teacher tells you to write a poem about your family, what about your family do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about how your family is full of love? Do you want to talk about how your family uh, members are different, but you love each other still? Do you want to talk about how your family isn't the people that you were born into, but it's the family you made, your friends around you, your coworkers, your community? What is it about the family, which is the point, the prompt that you want to talk about? So if you have at least one sentence, na gusto mong isulat, meron ka ng basic na structure nung, nung poem mo. Okay? So again, pick a prompt. What do I want to talk about? Pin a point. What do I want to say about this prompt? Okay? Para at least meron kang focus. And then the third step would be for you to pack a punch. Now, how do we pack a punch when it comes to writing poetry? Minsan, okay, and this is because I believe that every one of you could be a poet. Now, to be a published poet is another thing. To be a working poet is another thing. To be a great poet is another thing. Again, iba-iba yan ang standards. But if your definition of a poet, babalik tayo dun sa original definition ng Greek, which is anyone who makes things, someone who makes things. If you want to write a poem, kung sino ka man ngayon, wherever you may be, you can do it. Okay? Now, you just need to get started. So again, pick a prompt. What do I want to write about? What do I want to say about what I'm writing about? And then, pag naalam ko na yung gusto ko sabihin, tsaka ako siya lalagyan ng rhetorical devices. Kasi some people speak in poetry. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Um, hindi na nila iniisip na, okay, I want to write about hope. And I want to write about hope persists even if darkness is always present or something like that. They don't need to write it down before adding rhetorical devices. They would just write, hope is a candle ever bright, something like that. Wala, just came to my head, no? Something like that, di ba? Um, if you can speak in poetry, good. Pero not everyone can do it right away. So for those of you who can, just write a sentence, write a simple sentence, and then we will add the metaphors after. Okay? Talagyan na lang natin pagkatapos. Now, the best way for us to do it is to try, to actually try to do it. So let's let's try to do that right now, okay? So pick a prompt, now, we will... Ayun na naman yung EPs, ano ba yan? Nasa corner pa naman ang eye ko yung screen sa, sa Kumu. Now, uh, again, we will form a poem. Now, tulungan niyo ako ha. May ito gagawin natin. About a uh, joint project, tayo lahat. Okay? Just so I could establish that you could do this on your own. So, joint project tayo. Anong gusto ninyong prompt? Okay? Anong gusto niyo pag-usapan natin sa poem? Sige, type it in the chat box. And let me know. Pipili tayo dyan. Okay? Anong gusto yung topic ng poetry? Anong prompt? What do you want us to write about? Answer. Okay? So, write it in the comments. Tignan natin. Oh, Kenneth says hope. Janelle says family. Sige. Enrico says family then. Mark says dreams. Yeah, I've written a lot, a lot of poetry about dreams. Sonia says love. Yeah. Christian says freedom. Hmm? Good, good. Positivity. Life about pagkain. Okay, sige. Try natin pagsamasamahin, ha? Okay, sabi niyo, hope. You have love. Family. Food. Okay, so, yan ang prompt natin. Okay, lagay na natin yan lahat. Yan. I-try natin siya pagsamasamay niyan. Ira says about a friend. Sige, we'll see, we will try to insert it here then. So, if we want to use that, okay, Marua says acceptance. Sige, sama na natin yung acceptance. Yan. Ayaw natin na sobrang haba ng poem natin kasi kulang tayo sa time, no? Pero, sige, we will try to put everything, all the components together. It may not be the exact word, okay? But we will have some form of representation in the, in the poem that we're going to write. Now, what do we want to say? Okay, putting all of these together, uh, how can we say it? Now, maganda kasi meron tayong prompt na food. 
So we can say that food plays a role. Okay. Food and family and how certain food can show hope. Family is love. Okay? Tas maganda yung acceptance kasi can be a lot like eating. ba? Kasi ang food, it can be out in the table, pero if hindi mo siya kakainin, if you don't accept it, then it's not there. Okay? So, um, if I want to pin a point, I would say probably, okay, um, that, let's use that as a metaphor, that Ang fa family is food laid out on a table. And then we just add the things. Okay. So we will try it together. Okay. I'll write one line. Okay. And uh, let's see wh what can come out of it. Okay. Okay. So again, we'll start with one line. Ganyan lang muna. Food is love laid out on a table. Okay, and again, we will use now to pack a punch the idea that food can symbolize different, ano ba, different forms, different personalities of your family. Okay, so food is love laid out on a table. Okay, so food is love laid out on a table to be tasted or consumed as long as we're able. We'll start with that. Now, if we want to say... Ayan, maganda yung line ni Angelica, no? So, itatag natin yan, ha? Tsaka yung kay MJ. So, sabi niya, with them to hope. Maganda to. I am able. And then, MJ says that love doesn't have a label. Now, the next question would be, would be do I want this to be a happy poem or not? Or pwedeng both naman. Okay. Food is lovely down on the table to be tasted and consumed as long as we're able. From near and far gathered together. Okay. Yan. Okay. So we are now just building out words. But the thing is, again, we are just going to edit later. <laughs> Ayan. Now, what we'll do here would be, I will employ na lang. Okay, buhay natin to para may space tayo. We will do repetition just so we have some form of structure. Huwag nyo submit to sa homework ninyo ha, by the way, yung mga bata nanonood. Okay? Para meron tayong repetition, iuulitin natin yung line. Food like family all sat on a table. Okay, wag na natin gawing food. Gawin natin love para meron siyang parallel dun sa kanina. Love like family all sat on a table. Idugtong natin yung line ni Angelica. Tama ba si Angelica ba yun? Ayan, with them <coughs> to hope. With them Nagyan natin ng around kasi medyo maikli yung ating uh, metro doon. Around to hope I am able. Wala mo na tayong ano sa punctuation sa. Pwede natin linisin mamaya. Tapos ilagay natin yung aspect lang of what you said kanina which is ang family is like, di ba, it can be somewhere else. It can be hope of outside. So what we could say would be if yung line ipipilit natin, ipasok natin to yung that love doesn't have a label. Okay. All right. So now again, this is so super um ano lang to, one shot. Okay? What we talked about kanina. Again, integrating all of your ideas then. Yan hindi ko man maisulat word per word but binabasa ko yung mga sinasabi ninyo. And magaganda yung lines. Ito si George has together as we sit the flavor of life. We shall rise against the odds because we are family. Good. Lalo na kung flavors, we can, in, of course, insert that. But just so we can parang hammer it down. Five minutes na pinapasa na yung paper. We have something at least. Okay? Forgive my handwriting. Uh, nakapareho ko daw ng sulat si Agnes. 
Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, my handwriting is, isn't as good. Okay? But, ang nakalagay dito is, okay, sample lang to, no? So, again, this is a poem we all wrote together today, borrowing some of your words. So, food is love laid out on a table to be tasted or consumed as long as we're able. Again, medyo direct yung ano na yan. Lalo na kung high school poetry to. Okay na yan, okay? From near and far gathered together, different in taste and texture, but tethered. So, bitin yun. Ibig sabihin yung tethered, ibig sabihin magkakakabit. So, at least, meron tayong idea na, again, ang point is that all of these foods are, I am still uncomfortable with the word foods. All of the food, they're different, but they're together, connected in some way. Tapos, ikakabit natin doon sa love-like family. All sat on the table with the, with them around to hope I am able. Good line from Angelica. Device lang natin ng konte. And as plates and platters who knock from a neighbor, the love I accept doesn't need to have a label, or doesn't need a label. Pwede na rin yun. Sige, tanggalin na natin yung to have. Doesn't need a label. Okay. Yan. Congratulations. <laughs> Yan. For co-writing. And everyone, wala akong laugh, laugh track or clap. Ako na lang kala pala clap. Yay! Yan. Congratulations, uh, team, for co-writing your very first poem. Okay? So again, lahat tayo, he co-wrote this. Now, whether it's good or bad, depende na sa nagbabasa yan. Of course, this can do with a lot more ed editing. Kung gusto ninyo, gusto niyo ba i-post natin yung poem, tapos pwede niyong dugtungan or pwede niyong i-edit. Or pwede niyong i-revise. Yan. So again, co ano to? Co-writing, no? Lahat tayo may ambag. Okay? But huwag nyo ipapasa sa teacher ninyo. Kasi nanonood din yung mga teachers ninyo. Yung mga teachers po dyan na nanonood, paki please uh, raise your hand to signify your attendance, no? <laughs> Mahuhuli kayo ng teacher ninyo. So again, I'll just probably post it on Instagram or on Facebook na lang. You can play with this. It's a good start. Okay? And I give you permission to play with it kasi sa atin to lahat. Okay? So, communal poem. No? Kung gusto nyo dugtungan, gusto nyo i-edit, gusto nyo i-drawing, di ba? Bahala kayo. But that is poetry. Again, it's something that we make. Now, paano naman, kayo naman? Okay? Again, that is just an example, no? So, kung kayo naman, it's your turn. What do you do? I'm going to give you a, an exercise. Okay? So, I want you to pick a prompt. Yan. Ito yung prompt natin. Okay? So, I want you to write something. Okay? It's about a color you like. Okay? So, or kahit a color lang. Any color. So, I want you to... Ang title ng poem natin. Okay? Para mas, mas nakanarrow tayo. Ang title ng poem natin is uh, a color. Okay? For example, sa akin, ang title ng poem ko is purple. Sa inyo, pwede red, blue, cyan, aquamarine. Di ba? Punta kayo doon sa turquoise. Di ba? <laughs> teal, or anything, pick a color, any color that you like. That is your prompt, okay? So, Enrico daw blue, si MJ black, okay? So, again, any color you like, that would be your prompt. Your, your turn kasi to, no? And then, I want you to pick a point. So, why this color, no? Like, just tell me about the color. What does it remind you of? What does it make you feel? What do you think it stands for, right? Blue, kasi usually is about sadness, right? But if you think about blue, Ang mainit na apoy is blue, right? Kasi di ba pag pula yung apoy, bisa hindi pa yun masyadong mainit. Pero kapag blue na yung apoy mo, sobrang init na nun. So again, that's the paradox of it. That's what makes it poetry, no? It <laughs> makes it creative because it's another way of looking at things, changing perspective. Angelina says green. So a green, it means, di ba? Success, progress, money. But it also means envy, right? So again, think about these colors. So you want, pick one color lang. And that's why this color. Talk about the color. Just talk about the color. Okay? And then pack a punch, just add at least two metaphors. Two metaphors lang. Now, uh, kahit two rhetor rhetor rhetorical devices, kahit hindi na metaphors, pero of course, don't be so technical about it. Now, white is the color of clouds or ano. Uh, make the clouds mean something. Right? So think about that. This is your prompt. Okay? So we don't have a lot of time uh, for you for you to full of, form a full poem. So I want you to take a screenshot of this. Lalakihan na lang namin. Okay? This is your homework. Okay? So write something. Now, if you're having a hard time na, ako hindi ko po kaya na 
12 stanzas uh, na poem, di ko kaya na three stanzas na poem na four lines each. If if wala akong, if hindi, you can't write it right now, kasi it doesn't have to be right now naman, what we will do will be, I would introduce a structure to you. Now, ano yung haiku? Okay? Now, if you're not familiar with the haiku, again, we mentioned it na rin katrina, it's a lot, it, ano, the, the, it's still a poem, no? Pero mayroon siyang dagdag na aspect, which is the structure. Kasi when it comes to haiku, hindi lang enough that you pack a punch, Meron siyang painting ng picture. It follows a certain structure. Una sa lahat, haikus usually are about nature. So, usually. Pero modern haikus don't really follow those rules. But if you break it down, for example, and again, para libre ibash, I wrote this, I think, a few years ago. Matagal na to eh. I write haiku for, I am too lazy to write, a good full-length poem. So, if you break down natin using this haiku, yung ibig sabihin or structure ng haiku. Okay. Yeah, nasabi na ni Mark Quadra, 575. Yes, kasi this is one syllable, two, three, four, five. So first line has to have five syllables. Okay. I am too lazy to write. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here you have seven syllables. Okay. And a good full length poem. A good full-length poem. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, five syllables. Okay. Now, there's another aspect uh, when it comes to uh, haikus, which is there's something called kireji. Of course, I don't speak speak Japanese, so I can't give you a full definition of this. Wala rin direct English translation. But what the closest thing I could explain would be a kireji is much like... Um, a rhetorical device that ja the Japanese use, whether it's a punctuation or a syllable or a word that changes the, the meaning of the sentence. Kadalasan, in contrast siya. So if you notice, for example, um, and it's actually a, a, a poet from another country who told me about the Kireji. Kasi I have a secret, uh, I have a secret poetry blog um, from long before na some of you bakan hanap nyo na. Uh, pero hindi ko ipapromote kasi uh, some of my deepest, darkest secrets are there. <laughs> Na, joke lang. So, meron akong um, old blog, uh, blogging poetry yeah, website. And someone wrote a comment saying, na, oh yeah, this is good kasi it has kireji. Not all haikus daw these days have that. It's called, ang kireji is cutting word. Ibig sabihin, it kind of parang marks something, emphasizes something, changes something. Now, ano ang kireji in this case, uh, doon sa haiku na ito? Uh, this uh, a good example would be this because he I write haiku. So that means that this person, again, the, the author, not necessarily me, okay, the the speaker writes poems. Pero the twist is, ang sabi niya, because lazy siya to write a good full length poem. So this person is both good and bad at writing at the same time. So there's a bit of humor or a bit of interjection in the poetry. So, yun yung haiku. So, if you are having a hard time writing a full poem about the color that you chose, right? Dito napapasok yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na minsan kapag may structure, mas napapadali yung mga bagay. Kasi if you think na, okay, I don't need to write a poem about the color red or the color light blue or the color teal or the color white, you can just write a haiku about it, okay? Kasi kung haiku siya, dahil 575, kailangan ko siya pagkasyahin mas madali nyong maiisip or mapupuno yung 575 na yun. Kasi pata na siyang jeep, di ba? Pag kompleto pag 59 syllables, tapos na, move on ako. Okay? Yan. Now, this is another example of a haiku I wrote a few years back. It says, the grasshopper, the grasshopper sits happily singing, chirping the sparrow circles. Uh, the title of this is Oblivion. Hi, teacher May. Uh, <laughs> ganun po ba? <laughs> okay. Yeah, medyo mapanakit yung iba kong Medyo mat kasi masakit po yung pakiramdam ko kaya ganun. <laughs> Yun ang totoo noon. But this is a, 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 another example of a haiku. It says the grasshopper sits happily singing, chirping the sparrow circles. So the idea here is kasi diba, a bird usually eats a grasshopper. The title is Oblivion kasi uh, again, using the punctuation mark. This is an m dash. Okay? Now, ang M dash can take the place of comma. We have a full discussion on this pala ba, either way, on YouTube, ha? So, you can just type Laika M dash 
or like a hyphen. May discussion tayo sa hyphen, m dash, tsaka m dash. Hanapin nyo na lang yun. Pero ang m dash can be like a comma para magsingit ka, pwedeng parenthesis para magsingit ka. But uh, the reason why I wrote this like this, um, and again, pwede natin i-bash kasi ako yung nagsulat, <laughs> is because the idea is that yung nakapaloob dun sa m dash, it can be taken away but it can also emphasize something. And because, if you notice, nakapwesto siya dito, ang next question would be, sino yung happily singing and chirping? Eh di ba, pareho naman ang ibon tsaka ang grasshopper na nag-chirp. So, sino yung masa masaya? Nakaupo lang ba yung grasshopper? O nakaupo siyang masaya at chirping? Because of course, the sparrow circles, ibig sabihin kakainin niya yung grasshopper, di ba? Oblivion means, di ba, knowing nothing, basically, being unaware. So, yun. So, again, there are many layers to this. So, parang ang saya-saya nung line, tapos merong impending doom. So, again, these are things that you can play around when it comes to choosing your your poetry. Yan, meron na yata tayong sample. Yan, Kenneth has a, an, an entry, lakihan natin. Yan, sabi ni Kenneth, white, purity, all screens are white children, smile so bright. Their souls are as pure as white. They give us light in our darkest night. Diba? You see there's a presence of rhyme there with light and night, right? And bright. So good job, okay? So again, the thing lang with poetry, and now I would say this, no? anyone can write a poem. And that is why we are doing this, diba? This is writing to survive, no? I mean, you, any one of you, you can write, okay? But to take a poem from being a poem into being a good poem and a good poem from being a good poem to being a great poem is a journey so it falls under editing talaga sometimes now some people they really write and they just leave it at that and that's also good we do one shot poetry a lot no me and my sisters and si coach Chubby din every one of us no we all write one shot poems but if you want to like take it a step further diba of course you can Still play around with it, revisit it. And then the next challenge would be knowing when to stop. Okay? Yeah, Chris, yes, yes. I told, I said this then kanina. Um, haikus are usually about nature. And even when they are about nature, they usually mean something else. So again, there is always that disjoint. Pero modern haikus, hindi na nila. Huwag ka mahihiya, Kenneth. What you did was really good. Okay? No? So, again, it's really about that. Eh. And ito, honey naman. I'll read it na lang kasi it's on Kumu, no? Ito yung sabi niya. Purple. So, regal and grand, like prince, like a princess of royalty, majestic in every strand, silky, soft, and velvety. Right? Pretty good, right? So, it makes you feel something. No? Kasi ang purple really is the color of royalty. So, great, great, great start, honey, no? Nice. Very nice. Oh, si Enrico naman, may entry siya. Oh, blue by Enrico. A blue, 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 a blue is a sad color. When you saw the sky, a blue is a color sometimes good for you. Okay, so again, deliberate end. Good. Okay. Chris, okay lang ba, coach, na hindi nature yung theme? I would leave it off for the, again, this is writing to survive, no? So, depende sa teacher. <laughs> Yan yung sagot ko lagi sa mga bata, eh. Like, if your teacher says that a haiku has to talk about nature, and that is their definition of a haiku. And they ask you to write a haiku, you write about nature. Okay? Kasi you want a good grade. But if you just want to write a haiku, lalo na if it's like a modern haiku, kasi these days, diba, even on Twitter, you would find a lot of these. You have the freedom then to write about it. But again, haikus usually talk about nature. So, you don't have to yun. Kasi again, um, kahit ako ng studyante ako eh, that's what we do. Like, this is how, sabihin natin, this is how I write poetry in my own spare time but if my teacher asks me to write a poetry following the iambic type pentameter in the structure of a sonnet then i would do it so <laughs> yun yung yun yung ano natin yun yung parallel natin okay and lebelin is a great example then of a poem so it's not about color right but it's it's also a good example you see how interjections can play so happy hooray today is a great day you have your exclamation points. Again, these have to be deliberate choices now. Cheer up and let go of yesterday. Forget the past mistakes and decide that today you will get up and rise. Good. Diba? Very hopeful. So again, it's all about that. Now, babalik tayo sa definition natin kanina, no? Na when we talk about writing, 
poetry or anything like that. To I would leave you with this at the very least. We can agree about upon this. Two things: careful choice of words arranged in a careful structure. Careful, careful choice, careful arrangement of words. At you have at least you have to have at least that, in my opinion. Bakit? Because it's the choice of words that makes us feel things, and it's the careful arrangement of words that gives it life. Okay. All right. So thank you for watching till the end of this video. If you want to learn more, if you want to watch the other videos I'm going to be making, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Turn your notifications for all the updates that we have. Again, malayo pa tayong pwedeng pag-usapan soon. And uh, thank you for joining the team. I know this community has been kind to me for the past six years now. And I'm so happy that I get to welcome you as part of this team as well. Thanks, guys. And uh, I'll see you soon.